What's up guys, Jordan here of the Objective C Toros, Lesson 28, Part 2, Coding the Switch Statement. And last lesson, we were mainly just setting up for the switch statement, getting ready to code it, um, doing a few things in code, but this lesson will actually be coding the switch statement. Now, what is the switch statement? Well, the switch statement is a control statement that allows the value of a variable or expression to control the program's execution. And uh, a refresher on what a control statement is, uh, one thing happens if a certain condition occurs and another thing happens if a different condition occurs. So um, an example of a control statement is the if statement that we went over in lesson five. So that was a control statement um, and so is the switch statement. Now, what does the switch statement look like? Well, over there on the left, you see exactly what it looks like, and I'm going to run through exactly what everything means. Now, switch uh, lets the compiler know uh, this is a switch statement. Pretty obvious there. Then uh, you have in parentheses expression. Uh, the program evaluates the expression, and then if the expression is equal to case 1, it executes the statements for case one until it reaches the break statement. The break is executed, causing the program to jump to the end of the switch statement. Now, if the expression is not equal to case one, it sees if uh, the expression is equal to case two. If so, it executes the statements for case two, reaches the break statement, uh, the break is executed, causing the program to jump to the end. Now, if the expression is not equal to either one of the cases, uh, the program executes the default statements uh, if there are default statements and that is optional but uh, default statements will run no matter if the expressions um, are equal to it, if the expression is equal to any of the cases or not. And uh, in the example I showed you, I only had two cases but you can create uh, as many cases as you'd like and uh, one thing with switch statements is the cases can only be constants. You can't uh, have a variable that might be changing during the program. So if you want to uh, compare uh, variables that will be changing throughout the program to an expression, you'll have to use something else that I'll go over in a couple uh, slides uh, down. Now, uh, default, uh, these are statements that, like I said, will run no matter if any of the cases match the expression or not. And uh, some more specifics about switch. Uh, switch statements use labels and uh, an example of a label is right down below a uh, case constant one colon. That's a label. So a label is made up of an identifier followed by a colon. And all the statements following the label uh, run if the case is true. Uh, this is why you need those break statements because if you didn't have them, every statement after uh, a true case would run, including other cases. So I'll show you exactly what I mean uh, in this little snippet of code. As you can see, I don't have a break statement there. So if case one was equal to ex the expression, case one would run, all those statements would run, but also case two all of the ex all the statements that went along with case two would also run. So that's why you need those breaks um, in there. And like I said, uh, you need you can only run constants with uh, a switch statement. But if you have variables, what are you supposed to do? Uh, what are you supposed to use? Well, you would use um, an if else statement or an if, which I'll go over in the next slide. But this is what a uh, if else looks like. It looks very similar to switch um, as you can see you have if and then the expression and then uh, set it uh, you're actually using a double equal sign so it's seeing if it's equal it's not setting it equal uh, I went over that in like the first lesson with the double equal signs and all that but then you have the expression if it is equal and then uh, you have the else if it's not um, and then you have another if and then uh, you actually have else within the else, and that's kind of the equivalent of the default. So as you can see, it can get kind of confusing. Switch statements are a lot easier to understand. So switch is good when you have a lot of conditions, and if else really just gets too confusing to store them. But if else is good if you need to compare variables to an expression and you're not using constants. So it really just depends on 
how many you have and what you're going to be needing and you know it's a lot of different things depend on which one you would uh, choose and then here you can also just use a uh, mini if statements but uh, switch is the best choice for what we're going to be needing to do so that's why we're going to use it uh, in our program so anyways now we're going to jump into xcode and actually code up the switch statement Okay, so here we are in Xcode in the transaction class that we coded last time. Here's transaction.h and transaction.m. And we'll be using this code and implementing it with the switch statement in budget object.m. So the first thing we need to do is we need to import that transaction class. And once that's done, we can actually clean up the code a little bit. Uh, you can uncomment this double number dollars in England and then you can delete this double one about Europe and uh, actually you can put in you can delete this other one excuse me and then delete this so delete everything so it's just uh, double number dollars in England and double number pounds and then you can delete this array and this NS number because um, we're still going to keep uh, just the basic way that we do things the same for uh, the England budget. We're just going to be using the switch statement and, and everything for the Europe budget. So now that that's just a regular double, we can take out this. And okay, I th think we've cleaned everything up. Oh, except for this for loop. You can delete that, and we'll be implementing the charge foreign currency within uh, the for loop. So anyways, uh, now we need to actually create some new transactions, and we're only going to be using, like I said, this new way of doing it for um, the uh, Europe budget. But usually in a regular program obviously the user would import input all this information but we're gonna have to create it ourselves since this isn't quite a regular program yet but we're gonna put it all in an ns mutable array so create that and we're just gonna call it transactions array good basic name um, then this part you're very familiar with ns mutable array allocate some memory and then knit with and I'm just going to initialize with a capacity of 10. So if we want to add more and more uh, transactions down the line, we're just going to add two for right now. But if you want to add more down the line, you could. So now uh, transaction cash transaction. And what I'm doing here, if you're not exactly sure, is I'm just creating a new object. And remember that I can. I'm creating it based off of the transaction class that we made. It's the same thing what we do right here with budget, Europe budget, because uh, these classes implement all the uh, necessary resources and information from like NS object. They can create objects based off these classes. And now we're going to uh, assign this object that we just created. We're going to assign it uh, one of the methods that we set up last lesson. So cash transaction, create transaction, the amount 100 of type cash. And then we're going to add uh, this to the transactions array, cash transaction. And I'm just going to add a little comment thing, just kind of separate, because now we're going to add a charge transaction. So I'm going to create another object, charge transaction equals transaction new. And remember that new statement sets up everything for uh, initialization and everything. It's all wrapped up in there. And we'll set this one to uh, I guess 200 and then I've type charge and then transactions array add object 
charge transaction close everything up so now we've added all the information so you could add in a little comment and of adding info and now we're on to the new uh, switch statement that we're going to be adding so uh, you can leave all this the same you don't have to worry about that but uh, first off we're going to change some things with this for loop we're still going to use it um, but we can actually change it to transaction that will be the type and I'm going to change this to uh, loop transaction because it's a little bit better and more descriptive than just a transaction and it's not in Europe transaction anymore. It's now in the transactions array. So now we can actually code up the switch. So first thing is you call loop transaction. And if you don't remember what this for loop does, real quickly I'll go over that before I jump into the switch. Uh, just this is the type. You create a quick um, object loop transaction and it passes everything that's in the transactions array everything that's in the transactions array through this loop transaction and then it runs through everything that's um, now in this loop transaction object um, so it'll go through each of these two objects um, I went over that quite a bit in previous lessons so if you're still not sure just go back on some lessons where I went over the for loop but anyways um, the expression we call the object and then we pass this method return type and you may be saying, well, wait, what does return type do? Well, let me jump back to transaction.m where we have a return type right here. So when return type is called, it actually, uh, the program runs this statement, uh, which has the special value of return, and then it returns type. And you may be saying, well, what's type? Well, type is the same as the argument a type and a type that argument is um, up here in this method and as you remember that's right there so um, it gets kind of confusing because it's like this uh, return type returns type and type is equal to a type and a type is one of the arguments and it gets a little tricky but that's just the way um, Objective C roles, and you'll get used to it. It's not too bad once you kind of get familiar, but it's kind of confusing at first. But anyways, um, the first case is cash, and then if the return type is equal to this first case, cash, then it runs Europe budget, spend dollars, and then cash transaction return amount so it returns the amount of the cash transaction and again return amount if you go back uh, returns this IVAR amount and amount is set equal to the argument the amount and the amount is let me find it right there so um, it's actually right there for this one but so it return a hundred and now we're gonna add another case so this case is charge and oh, whoops don't need a colon there you need it at the end and then Europe budget charge foreign currency charge transaction return amount again close it all out and then you have uh, the place where you can put a default uh, statements but we don't need to worry about that so we can go ahead and build and run save all okay as you can see everything built and ran correctly converting 100 us dollars into foreign currency leaves uh, 900 then converting 200 dollars uh, and foreign currency leaves 650 and then the bottom part is the same because the bottom part is the England budget and we didn't really change anything with that so as you can see everything built and ran correctly um, pretty much this lesson is over uh, so if you understood everything that I did in code you can go ahead on to the next lesson because 
uh, we're not going to change anything more. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through exactly how everything ran in the program just so you fully understand it. So I guess I'll go back to transaction.h and uh, we created this type def um, and it's an enumeration so we added the cash and charge and with enumerations they just assigned the value 0 and 1 so basically these are variables with the uh, value of 0 and 1 and then uh, with the type def you can also create your own like type based off of it and uh, the type the real type is actually an int so whenever you say transaction type you're really just saying uh, you're declaring it as an int and then we have these ivars uh, type which is an int because it's based off of transaction type which is based off of enumerations which means int. so obviously you can see all that and then uh, a double amount and then we set up these methods create transaction double then the argument the amount then of type and then the type is transaction type so it's an int and then a type and then we have double return amount and of type transaction type return type now uh, we in the implementation we set type equal to the argument of a type and uh, amount equal to the argument of the amount and then uh, in return amount we just simply return the IVAR amount and in return type we just simply return the uh, IVAR of type and I already went over those when we we're coding so you're pretty familiar with those now in dot uh, M up here you won't have to worry about this if you have a regular program where the user is inputting data because they would specify what type it is, whether it's a cash or charge, and uh, they'd be entering all this information. So you really wouldn't have to worry about this. But um, since we don't actually have any user input yet, we don't have that implementation, uh, or we don't have that type of... Uh, feature implemented in our program yet uh, we have to just use uh, arrays and run everything through the array so anyways uh, that's pretty basic we've already gone over that in quite a few lessons previously then down here uh, the for loop we've already gone over that and the switch statement is uh, the last thing that I'm really gonna run over uh, all right it checks uh, this loop transaction and remember the loop transaction uh, gets everything that's passed uh, everything that's in this NS mutable array is passed through this loop transaction so uh, the first thing it goes one by one so the first one that is passed through this uh, switch statement would be the first one that's in this loop transaction so it would be the cast cash transaction so it would check cash transaction and then it would return the type and so it would return uh, this right here so essentially it's just returning a number value but to make it easier for us to read uh, we assigned it the name and we just refer to it as the name but really it's just returning the value one because that was the first one that enumeration but anyways uh, all that aside it returns the type and if that type is equal to cash then it runs this method so your budget spend dollars that's we've been going over that for months but anyways uh, then it uh, executes this last part so it executes cash transaction and the transact cash transaction is the object up here so it executes uh, that and then it returns the amount um, that's in that cash transaction so it returns this part right there because I already went over how uh, return amount uh, returns amount and then amount is equal to the argument and all that so anyways um, if we were doing uh, if we were on to the second one in this loop and it was charged, it wouldn't be equal to the first case, obviously, and it would 
skip and go to charge and check if that's equal and then it obviously would be but um, then the whole thing happens the same so uh, yeah I think that's pretty much all there is to go over uh, hopefully you understand this very well now I know it can be confusing when you're looking at when you're having to look at uh, the dot h file and then the dot m and then going into uh, the main and you're changing terms and sometimes it's like um, type and then a type and of type and it can get confusing I know but this whole kind of way of life if you will and uh, objective C once you start doing it more and more you get really used to it and it's not quite so foreign looking anymore so um, sorry about kind of going over or not really going over because I don't really have a set time but dragging this lesson out a little bit I just want to make sure you understood everything really well if you still don't understand some stuff just comment below and I'll try to answer your question if I can and also thumbs up this video that's greatly appreciated subscribe for more uh, great objective c tutorials coming in the very near future and uh yeah that's pretty much all for this lesson hopefully i'll see you in the next lesson real soon thanks for watching